Josh here from Inside Wrestling Truth, and on this week's show, we have the one and only Max Misery. Max, how you doing, man? Doing good, man. How about yourself? Really good. Thanks for coming and doing this interview with me. It means a lot. Thanks for having me. Uh, first question is, tell us where you're from and who trained you. I'm originally from Barstown, Kentucky. Uh, I basically got everything started in the BBW. Uh, I really, uh, I guess you could say, I. I've been trained by quite a few different guys. Uh, with uh, I've learned a lot from guys like Vic the Bruiser, from Todd Morton, from Tracy Smothers to Bullpain. Uh, you know, we have come a long way. I learned a lot from Suicide Kid and Jay, Pro or, uh, Jay Prodigy. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it's just yes, yeah. man. It's right. Do you have a favorite match or a favorite person to work with? Oh man, uh, I, I've always uh, loved the matches I've had with uh, J.C. Bailey. Uh, we've uh, we've had some pretty interesting matches. The Weed Eater on a pole uh, that was fun. That was actually done right here in the Coliseum. I believe that was like my second match here in the Coliseum. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, Simon says he's a blast to work with. Of course, we all grew up together. We've had some crazy three-way matches. Pretty good times back in the day. Right. What about worst injury or bloodiest match? Ah, uh, worst injury. That's easy. Uh, Derby day about two years ago, uh, I tore my ACL. Uh, I was doing a, uh, an assignment and off to the outside. There was about uh, six guys out there, and nobody hung to catch me. And, uh, straight to the concrete floor. So my ACL, the bloodiest match would probably have to be the weed eater on the pole with J.C. Bailey. Right. Yeah. What about favorite company? Favorite company? Uh, well, I've, I've worked for a lot of really good companies, actually. I've, I've always tried to stay away from the, the bad uh, the bad reputation companies. Uh, I love it. I love it here at CCW. It's one of my favorite places. It always has been. Uh, even PWF, I know they've had a lot of issues over these this last year, uh, but they they treated me well. Uh, that was one of my that's that's one of my favorite places to work. And of course, BBW where I got my start. That was you know yeah, well, that was something. Yeah. Do you have a least favorite? Least favorite? Uh, man, it, it it would. I can't even remember the name of the company. I don't even think they're around anymore. It was uh, it was right across the bridge in Corden, Indiana, and it was me and JC and two other guys in a fatal four way. And uh, we was tearing the house down during the show, and the referee was getting pissed because we were still in the show, and they were like, "Take it home, take it home, take it home." And we're like, "You know, screw you. You know, we're going to finish our match. You know, we're going to we're going to give these people their money's worth." And a bunch of heat broke out. And then we ended up throwing chairs in the back and cussing and fighting. That's right up there. That's probably one of the worst places I've ever been. Do yeah. you have a favorite promoter of all time? Joe Bailey. Joe Bailey, uh, he was smart. He knew how to run his business. He promoted, you know, uh, he paid you well. Uh, of course, starting out, he didn't, you know, uh, he gave us, us boys, me, JC, and Simon, he gave us a hard time, you know, we paid our dues. Gosh, we probably set up the ring for five years straight without a single payday for Joe. And, uh, but when he finally did start paying us, man, it was uh, money was there. He took good care of us. What about least favorite promoter? Least favorite promoter? Uh, have I ever worked for him? Or do I just have a least favorite promoter that I worked for? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, honestly, I, every promoter I've worked for, I, I've pretty much known uh, throughout the business, and everybody's done me pretty good as far as promotions that I've worked for. I've never been stiffed on my pay. Uh, you know, I always, you know, I always do good with other promoters working. Who's the stiffest guy that you've been in the ring with? Necro Butcher. <laughs> Very easy. That was uh, easy. One. Yeah, uh, he's by far the stiffest. Uh, yeah, I mean, some of the hardest chops I've ever felt. He felt like he was going to cave my chest. And uh, fun to work with, though. Yeah, love to. 
Um, I know they're having a J.C. Bailey Cup here next month. Uh, why is Simon Says not in this tournament? Uh, Jimmy uh, approached me and asked me about getting Simon for the show. Uh, I, I said, okay, you know, no problem. I'm, I know here lately uh, he's been having some issues with him. He, he's just hard-headed. Simon's hard-headed. Uh, I contacted Simon. Uh, he had his conditions on working for the tournament. Uh, me and Jimmy, we come to a conclusion. We was able to accommodate some of his uh, some of his wishes. And uh, the day that we released the poster for the tournament, uh, he uh, sends me a message on Facebook that says, "I'm only working the tournament on one condition." And I'm like, "You've already been booked." I'm, uh, you know, you can't be throwing these terms out now. We've got it set. We've got everybody booked. You know, uh, he's like, well, I'm only doing it if I'm working uh, Jason Pennington, which is a guy that we've known from back in the day. Super good guy, but my God, he gets hurt every time he gets in the ring. You know, he just loves him to death, but he doesn't need to be in the ring. He, you know, okay. he's dangerous. And uh, he said, I'm only doing that tournament on that condition. And I'm like, I'm going to see what I can do. I said, I'll see if I can get him a part of the show. I said, I can't promise you that he'll be in the ring. He's like, look, he said, I want my match with him or I'm not doing it. He's like, I don't even care whether I do it or not. You know, Pennington wants to do this tournament more than I do. He's like, I don't care. This tournament means nothing. And that kind of pissed me off, uh, you know, because this, you know, this is for our brother. This is for, this is where we started. We was, we were the three guys that started together. And then to hear him say he didn't care about it, that's when I was done with it. I'm like, you know what? We don't need you. And he had this, well, I'm going to, uh, good luck doing the tournament without me. Like, like this tournament was going to be based around whether he was here or not, you know. Uh, uh, it just, uh, it didn't set too good that he had that attitude. He was like, you know, he was like, screw you, screw Alistair, screw Jimmy, screw J.C. Bailey, screw this tournament. I don't need none of you or nothing. I'm like, you don't find me that way. Uh, that's pretty much, that's. That's why he's not in the tournament. But, uh, Is there any guys in the Indies you would like to work with that you haven't? That I haven't? Yeah. Uh, I, I would like to work with Jordan Cage. Uh, I'll be honest, when I first met Jordan, I thought, man, this is a cocky dude. I, I don't, you know, I'd like to get in the ring with him and be stiff as can be and just stretch the shit out of him. But after getting to know him and getting to do a few shows with him, uh, I, I think me and him would really mesh good together. I, I'd like to work with uh, i like to work with Jordan. Uh, yeah. What's your thoughts on the current state of the business? <sighs> Too many promotions. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, you got all these garbage promoters out there and I mean you know, not knocking any one promoter. Uh, you know, it's like down the road uh, in Corden and Charlestown and all this, you got like three or four places running out of the same building. Yeah. You know, that, that kills uh, that kills business. I mean, who's going to want to pay to see four shows in one building at a month? You know, uh, I, I just think you've got too much going on. You've got a lot of guys that are getting in the business and not paying their dues. Uh, they're not getting reputable trainers. Uh, and then, like, even in Kentucky, I mean, anybody can get a wrestling license for 20 bucks. You know? I think it needs to be more regulated on who, who, who gets in. And, uh, What's your favorite and least favorite town to work in? My favorite town? Uh, least favorite. Least favorite, I would have to say Portland Bowl. I hated that town because I've had knives pulled on me in that town. Uh, you get anything pulled over there? Yeah. Uh, my favorite town? Uh, that had to be my hometown. Uh, that had to be Barbstown. Uh, I've got a lot of memories in that building and uh, don't get to see that place enough. What shows are running in Barbstown? None, 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 none at the moment. 
What do you love and hate the most about the business? What I love and hate the most. What I love is being able to walk out and being able to put the people in my hand. You know, being able to make them do what I want them to do, make them respond the way I want them to respond, uh, and getting the reaction that I want from them. Uh, what I hate about the business, I think that would have to go back to the untrained and uh, the low-class promoters that don't want to pay their guys and don't want to you know, treat the guys that have worked hard fairly, you know. Yeah. Most memorable moment in your career? Most memorable moment in my career. Uh, I, well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to sound like a mark by saying this, but I, it was working with Buff Bagwell. Uh, that was a, a very high point in my career. Uh, that was back in uh, 2004. I was at a show in Somerset, Kentucky, and uh, Casey and Simon worked, and Buff Bagwell walked up to me. He's like, you're working to me tonight, you're going over. Uh, he's like, uh, what do you want to do? Uh, we had Rick Steiner do a run in the match, man. It was, uh, That's awesome. Yeah, it was a pretty memorable moment in my career. All right, now we're going to talk about friends and enemies in the business. Friends? Uh, man, I've, I've had a lot of friends in this business. I know a lot of people say you don't ever want to trust nobody in the wrestling business. Uh, I mean, even, you know, JC, JC Bailey, Simon Says. I mean, we were brothers, you know, we're inseparable uh, back in the day. Uh, and even all the way up till now, uh, me and Shane Mercer, you know, we're tight. Uh, uh, I've always put all my trust in them guys. I know I can trust them guys with my life. Feel the same way about me. Enemies, I really don't have any enemies. Uh, you know, uh, Jimmy, he's a hell of a guy. I like Jimmy, you know, I consider him a friend. We you know, talk on a regular basis. I really don't have any enemies in this business. That's cool. Funny moments in the ring. Funny moments in the ring. Is there one that like stands out? Oh man, I've had my tights pulled down before and then moved the whole crowd. Uh, I would consider that funny or embarrassing, but, uh, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's probably about, probably about the funniest or, uh, embarrassing moment ever. Do you have any regrets in your career? Uh, I regret that social media wasn't around when I got started. <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, I, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty satisfied. I know people say if you're not in this business to make money, you don't need to be in this business. Uh, but I'm one of those guys that I don't have to make a job in this business to get anywhere, you know. Uh, I grew up watching wrestling as a child. Uh, started with my great-grandpa taking me to the USWA show in the, in the Barstown Armory, watching Jeff Jarrett, Todd Norton, uh, you know, all them guys there, Dirty White Boy. And from then, I mean, I, I knew that's what I wanted to do. It was the love and passion. And, you know, money's never been an object to me. And believe me, there's been many a times and many a times I've drove the shows where I have ended up having to take money out of my pocket to be able to, you know, to travel the gas or, you know, just to do whatever I needed to do to entertain people. Yeah. Favorite JC Bailey story? Oh man, there's so many. Okay. Uh, in E-Town, Kentucky, uh, we had a guy there, his, he, 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 was, uh, he went by Sean Benham, uh, he was a uh, Jake the Snake Roberts kind of gimmick, you know, yeah. carried the snake out, long hair, you know, Jake the Snake all the way, so couldn't cut a promo like Jake or work like Jake, he was just Jake. Nobody really cared for this guy. Uh, he was hard to get along with, I thought. Uh, he left the locker room and JC found his water bottle. And this water bottle goes in yellow water bottle. So JC pours the water out of this water bottle and pisses it. <laughs> so 
This guy comes back into the locker room uh, after JC's already pissed in his water bottle and he picks it up and he's, he starts spraying his hair down for his match and spraying his chest, spraying all over him. And he stops and he starts to smell it like something's not going to smell right. But then the next thing you know, he starts spraying himself in the mouth. And me and JC are just like, oh my God, he's done spray piss all in his mouth. And that's probably one of the funniest, this is the funniest things that I've ever seen him do. There's quite a few though. Do you feel the young talent today lacks respect for the best? Uh, yes, without a doubt. I mean, uh, I've always tried to make it a point, you know, no matter how long I've been in the business, every time I walk into a locker room, you drop your bags and shake everybody's hands. Uh, and, you know, I, I see young guys come in now and they drop their bag and they want to go straight to the person they're working and they're like, hey, we would, you know, they don't acknowledge nobody. Yeah. They don't want to listen, you know, I, I mean, I've seen it everywhere I've went, you know, you tell a guy something or if you try to give them advice on what they can do to make themselves better, they're like, yeah, 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 and walk off, you know, they're not, you know, uh, it's just guys like that, you know, they're like, okay, keep blowing me off, you know, sooner or later you're going to get in there with me. You know, at one point in time I was at that age and I was that young in the business and I had an attitude like that before and bull pain straightened me out real quick. You know, uh, he whooped my ass one night in uh, E-Town, Kentucky and uh, that, you know, that little eight minute match that he beat my ass all over that building, uh, I learned more in that match than I ever had in my life. What's your thoughts on uh, WWE and TNA? Oh man, TNA's still on TV. Uh, did, did you see the crowd they had in Louisville? Last yeah, I, I seen the I seen the Facebook pictures going around. It's it, it's scary. I mean, uh, WWE has no competition, and I think that hurts the business. Uh, when you have no competition, why why should I? You know, what what can you do better? You know, what can you do better than this company? You know. And that's the thing, WWE has no competition right now, which I think is why WWE is even wider now. Uh, you're, you're not seeing, you know, I do like how they're pushing the younger talent. Uh, they're making the younger talent come up. Uh, but you're not seeing WWE do anything different out of what they normally do because yet they don't have to. Right. You know, uh, it's true. Bro. So. Thoughts on Billy Black? Man, you know, Billy Black for 14 years, uh, 15. Uh, well, I stopped the world of Billy. Uh, me and him, we've worked countless times. Uh, spent many a times over at his house partying. Uh, he, he's one of the brothers in this business that uh, I think a lot of. Uh, and you can bet whenever you see me and him uh, in the ring, we're going to give it everything we've got and we're going to beat the hell out of each other. Uh, it's just, you know, we just have that mutual respect with each other and uh, he's one of the best guys in the business. Memories of working in the Coliseum for the first time? First time. I, I remember uh, the first time I come in this building, uh, I, it was being booked by Ox Harley. Uh, I was uh, 18, no, 17. I was 17 at the time, and uh, JC was 16 at the time. And uh, we come into this building, nobody knew who we were. And uh, Ox had seen us doing, you know, a little bit of work for BBW and stuff like that, working illegally under the hood. And I was like, oh, I'll bring you boys and dad and Phil, uh, and, you know, let y'all have a match. Well, it put us on opening match, and, uh, man, I remember that. Uh, we did this little spot to where we got to the outside of the ring. Nobody was, you know, the crowd was quiet. And uh, we, he did this springboard off the guardrail. We did a hurricane run off the guardrail to the floor. And the place went nuts. And I mean, they started chanting over here, over here. And me and JC beat the hell out of each other all over this building. And that was the first time we introduced him to the weed eater. And that, that moment right there in this building, I mean, having people just like that, it was uh, it was pretty chilling as far as uh, the reaction. What were your thoughts and emotions uh, working the IPWJC 
Bailey, Tribute Show with Simon Says. Most emotional match I've ever had. Uh, it was uh, definitely the moment didn't seem real. Mm -hmm. It was uh, we had spots where we was crying. You know, I remember one spot where he did a suicide dive, and I looked at him right in the eyes as he was coming through the ropes, and I seen the tears uh, coming out of his eyes. And, you know, he hit me, and you know, we were down on the ground and crying. And, uh, even we did this spot in the ring where we were down on, on our knees trading, trading punches, which was something JC did with everybody who worked with. He would always trade stiff ass shots, and uh, I mean, we, could, I mean, it was just one of those moments that. Uh, that you really can't describe it unless you're in that moment. I mean, I really can't describe it now. I just know it was the, the most emotional match I've ever had. How do you stay motivated and focused to continue your career? Keep going. Man, I... It's a tough question. Uh, 
just support your local independent wrestling. Uh, WWE's got to have some kind of competition, and uh, it's not TNA right now. So uh, <laughs> get out there and uh, support your local company. Uh, but give it to a promoter that's worthy of having your money, and somebody that's not going to stiff the boys, somebody that's not going to stiff the fans. Uh, you know, just get out and support wrestling. And, and, uh, thank you all for your support. Continuing to buy tickets to see me. Thanks. Thank you.